All right. So here are the answers. So can you see my screen? No, you can't. Doot, 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 doot. Yes, now you can. OK, let me put it a bit bigger. OK, so what is it we want to do exactly? So we want this function, mint an NFT for me, please, to mint an NFT to your address. So the first thing you need to check is this. Here it's calling a function called mint an NFT with two parameters, the contract address, so the ERC721, and the person you're minting the NFT to, so the person you're sending the NFT to. Here there's a trap. See, I inverted these, the NFT recipient and the NFT address, uh, addresses are inverted. Oh no, so the first thing is you need to invert these. Yeah, I like sneaky things, you know. I like when people have to read the code. Anyway, first thing, okay, so this line should work. Now, NFT to mint recipient, internal, and NFT to mint address, internal. So how do I populate these addresses? Let's take a look at this one. So if I look up for, if I look for this uh, variable, I can see first that it is defined here. This is how you define a storage variable. So you define it as a function. It's called a storage variable. And then there's another way you interact with it, which is in its view function. So this is basically, this is you declaring a variable, and this is you making it public in Solidity, right? Uh, it takes a bit more line of code in Cairo to do that, but we do it explicitly so that things are a bit more safe, right? And then when is this address populated? As you can see in the constructor, it is populated here. I use the function write to write number 49 here, which is not what I need. I want the address of the contract. So I'm going to go here, and this is the address I want to use. All right, so I'm going to use this and convert it from hexadecimal um, to decimal, because StarkNet type is a felt, and I want it in decimal. So OK. I'm going to populate it here, right? All right, so now when he's going to call nft to mint address internal.read, it should read the proper contract address. Let's try to compile it. Let's check if it works. So far, so good. OK, now the second part, the second one, nft to mint recipient, that's me. How do I populate this address? Let's see where it is manipulated. OK, so it's declared here. There's a view function here. There's the function we want to use it with. And then there's this function here that is basically an external function that you can call with a parameter. And you can write to it. So two things. Here I can do two things. Either I want to use this function, so you have to deploy the contract, and then use the function. And in this case, I really want this address here, which is the parameter, to be written here. I don't want the address, the recipient address, to be 12345 and so on. So I'm just going to say, hey, take this and write it there. Right? It's really a simple example, guys, right? I didn't make it too complicated. I wanted you to be able to do it in 20 minutes. <laughs> but anyway, does it compile? It does. Very cool. OK, so now. Now, if I want to do this, I can deploy it. I can then call set recipient address and then call mint an NFT for me, and it will mint an NFT. Does that work? Yes. Can we do better? Yes, also. So how could we do it better? First, instead of doing this here with an external function, you know, we could add it in the constructor. If I do this here. It also works. I mean, this won't work, but I can put the address. So I'm going to take my argent x wallet here, address. Convert it to decimal. And then I'm going to say, hey, write these things. Does it compile? It does. It will. <laughs> OK, cool. Can I do better? Yes. Here, I deploy the contract, and then I need to mint it. Can I mint it directly in the constructor? Probably. 
So I'm going to say, hey, min this NFT for me here. Does it compile? It does. So this, when I will deploy my contract, will credit min the NFT and credit it for me directly. Can I do better? Of course. You know, I could, for example, here, these addresses, they're set in stone. Maybe I don't want to do this conversion every time. So I could give here two parameters. So for example, NFT is the address. So it's a felt. And then recipient, it's a felt also. So I could put this here. This is the NFT. And this is the recipient, right? So here, this will work. It will compile, but you can't. If you click here on deploy, the transaction will fail because you will call it without argument. So in that case, if you want to do it in Remix, you will create a deploy script. You will open it here. And then you will say, hey, here are my addresses. Here is the NFT address, blah, blah, blah. Here's my recipient address, blah, blah, blah. And voila, you can run this and deploy your script and your contract will work. I could keep going. There's a lot of things you can do with smart contracts, obviously. But what I want to underline here is that, you know, um, I think the Remix plugin still, I think the biggest thing missing is the debug information if something doesn't work in your code. But other than that, it's a really easy way for you to start messing with smart contracts on Cairo and try modifying them. Okay, so I encourage you at the top of this file, I've added a bunch of links to our tutorials. If you actually open the, if you open the repo, where is it? If you open the repo, you can see that on the parent organization, there's a good amount of tutorials. You should take a look at them, try to play with them, and then import them in Remix and see what you can do with them. Okay? Are there any questions or observation? Yes. You can have open Zeppelin. <coughs> Sorry? You can have open Zeppelin uh, implementation in Cairo, yeah. right? And how can you then import? Uh, sure. So you cannot. <laughs> you <laughs> can. No, I mean like you can in Cairo. You cannot in the in the Remix plugin. The Remix plugin doesn't allow you to have things in multiple files. You have to have everything in the same file, which is a big limitation. But you know, it will be in the next version of the plugin. But you can, um, so if you're curious how to do that, I encourage you to check that tutorial. It will basically teach you how to take an open Zeppelin smart contract and customize it to, in that case, run an ICO, but basically it's to customize it to fit your need. And then this one will teach you how to do the same with NFT and deploy your own NFT. And you get to see it on an NFT marketplace, so that's fun. Does that answer your question? Yeah, cool. Yeah. There was another question, maybe? Yes. Here, let me. Um, so, in your Cairo file, no, there's no way to cast your felt to exa your hexadecimal to, fi uh, to decimal. In the various IDEs we're working with, so the most used tools for Cairo development are Nile and Art Add. <coughs> uh, I think some of them have tools to cast hexadecimal to decimal. But right now, so right now, StarkNet works fairly well. Cairo works fairly well. You can do a lot of, I mean, you're, we're basically a feature parity with Ethereum in terms of what you can do on StarkNet. Uh, but the tooling is not great. Uh, it, it's still a bit clunky. Uh, it needs debugging. So when in doubt, put it in decimal. Does that answer your question? Cool. Uh, yes. Sorry. No. Uh, is the plan then we have to integrate with Hazard or Truffle? You mean for Remix? I'm not sure I understand your question. If, you, if we want to uh, improve dev tooling, sorry. If, if you want to improve dev tooling on Cairo, is the plan to integrate more with Ardat and Truffle and some like? Oh, so you know we can't speak for these teams, uh, like how, where they're going to spend their time, right? I would love to have a Starknet smart contract in Truffle. We were with their team two hours ago talking about how to do that, and they're working on it. They will release a truffle box for Starknet soon. 
Um, there is a plugin for Hard Hat, which is maintained by a team of our ecosystem, so you can already use Hard Hat with StarkNet. And Nile is developed by Open Zeppelin to manage your uh, your Cairo smart contract. So um, StarkNet is not a ZK EVM. It's not an EVM. I mean, there's no ZK EVM anyway. <laughs> but it's not EVM compatible, and we're not trying to be. So we have our own tooling. But we're trying to find avenues to converge so that you can manage both Solidity smart contract and Cairo smart contract. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Yeah, sure. sure. Thanks. Wonderful. Uh, yeah. Please. Have maybe another. I was talking with uh, somebody here, so I was wondering if you are a Solidity developer. So if you're already writing through the team, um, do you think that developers will then move to Cairo, or do you think that you will need to f to to uh, teach to specific kind of developer that will be like Cairo developer and not necessarily Solidity developer? Um, so I think most Solidity developers. <laughs> are under 30 and i doubt that solidity is the last smart uh, the last language they will ever learn so i'm confident you know s writing smart contract in cairo is difficult not because of Cairo, but because writing smart contract is difficult once you know how to write smart contract in solidity you know how to write smart contract moving to another syntax is not that difficult so i think there is a natural overlap for people who, are, who will be interested in cairo with people who are interested in solidity and also, StarkNet being a ZK rollup tightly coupled with Ethereum, you can really see it as an extension to Ethereum. So eventually, a lot of people will move to, they won't necessarily move to Cairo, but they will use Cairo to make their app richer and deeper and to have more features and functionalities. Um, I would also add that we also see people who are very new to smart contract programming and don't know Solidity, and they jump straight into Cairo, and they seem to like it. Um, one of the reasons being that the structure of the ZK rollup gives you way more power in your application. You, you know, scalability is on two axes. We often think of one, which is doing cheaper transaction or faster transaction. The other one is if you have a more powerful machine, you can do more powerful smart contract. You can do more calculation. You have more power at your end. This is a very exciting tool over developers, which won't necessarily need solidity because they will have L2 uh, native apps that will leverage the capacities of this. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah thanks. Uh, I don't want to <laughs> take too much time. I know you guys have a busy day, but happy to answer more questions. Uh, uh, I got a question. Uh, is it possible for us to write tests on uh, Remix for Cairo? To write tests? Yeah. Yes. We have, there are testing uh, solutions, uh, both for Hard Hat and on Nile, where you can write your, uh, your... I mean, the tests are written in Python, right? They're not written in... Cairo, but we're, there's a tool, a new tool coming out called Protostar where you can write your test in Cairo. Is that it? Oh, I'm sorry, you mean in the Remix plugin? Yeah, yeah Remix. Uh, yeah. Not that I know of. Okay, thanks. But, you know, I know the guys uh, for Remix are not that far. You should put it on your wish list. Maybe they can work on it. All right. Well, thank you a lot for your time. Uh, happy to talk more. Uh, you, you have an easy way to reach us uh, if you want to learn more about StarkNet. Um, and looking forward to see how we can make the StarkNet uh, plugin in Remix better. Thank you, guys.